Okay, now we move on to a specific example that I will show you. And then in this example, you will see that different disciplines can have a role in working in this problem. Okay. I'll show you a one simple problem, which is the prey-predator relationship. Okay. So in this relationship, you have a member or one species, usually the predator, consumes another member, which is the prey. Okay. So this is a simple problem. You said, okay, what's so what's interesting about prey predator relationship? What can we learn from it? Or what can we do about it? What are the research we can do in relation to this relationship? Okay. If you Google it, you actually find a lot of literatures, okay, uh, doing studies in relation to prey predator. Okay. One is ecosystem. So I think you, you thought of it as biology, uh, maybe biologists are doing studies on it or ecosystem. But ecosystem itself is an interdisciplinary study. Okay? Ecosystem includes disciplines like biology, geography, and earth science. So itself is an interdisciplinary work. Okay? And then if you look at the relationship of the organisms you have in an ecosystem, you can actually try to draw something like this. Okay? For, for this illustration, this actually... Um, associate, I, ha, I usually associate this to graph theory. So you can assume that the organisms are, or the species are the, uh, the nodes and you have directed edges. And then you can perhaps use graph theory to study their relationship or their interactions to each other. Okay? So when we try to illustrate this in this structure, this actually is not that complex. This is still simple complex. A simple structure, but not that simple because you have more than two, okay? But not that complex, okay? Because in reality, we know that this is not the complete structure of prey predator, right? Because we are not here, okay? <laughs> right? We are predators, remember that. So, in that structure, if you see the relationship, there's a relationship. So it actually can be associated to behavior studies, political science, sociology, even in economics. How? So the strategy, okay, how the predator catch their prey, how the predator hide or um, how they try to um, strategize in hiding and catching their prey. So these concepts are very similar in economics in sociology, in behavioral science, and of course, especially in politics. I think you will see a lot of applications of prey predator now in the uh, political campaign. We try to associate, you need some imagination and creativity to associate these things. Okay, so there are a lot more uh, disciplines associated to prey predator. Okay, now we focus on its association to mathematics. Okay, so usually, instead of relationship, we call it a system. For engineering, engineering uh, mathematicians, we call the systems and relationships. So we focus in particular on uh, the prey-predator relationship of fox and robin. So from the complex structure we have earlier, we skin it down to only two. Okay, one predator, one prey. Okay, you can do a lot of research in just studying one prey, one predator. And then, using this relationship, you can actually use graph theory to uh, describe the interaction between the predator and the prey. Okay? So one arrow there describes the growth rate of the predator. The other arrow, there's another arrow there that uh, describes the growth rate of the prey. Of course, they grow, right? They reproduce and reproduce. So there's growth rate for predator and prey itself. So, and of course, this is uh, a natural world, so they also die. So they also die naturally. Okay? So you also assume some variables for their death, death rate, okay? their natural death rate. But for the prey, aside from its natural death rate, okay, it can also die caused by the predator. Okay? So you have also some edges or uh, directed edge connecting the, pre the predator to the prey 
um, associating its attack rate. Okay. Okay, with this illustration structure, usually with this interaction, you can build a model out of it. Okay, so this ordinary differential equations actually describe the behavior I showed earlier. Okay, A is the growth rate of the prey, and B is the rate at which the predator destroys the prey. So it's basically the death rate. Okay. And then C is the death rate of the predators. That's why it's negative because it's reducing, right? The population is reducing. And then what is the, the thing that increases its population? It's the rate at which the predator increased by consuming the prey. You see, this is how um, horrible the real situation is. Uh, its growth rate is dependent on the prey. Okay? So if you have if you don't have prey, it will be hungry, and then it will also die soon, okay, or faster. Okay? So basically, what we have here on the first equation, um, it's the change in the prey's population given by its own growth rate, which is Ax, okay, minus the rate at which it is preyed upon, which is Bxy. The second equation okay, is the change in the predator's population as growth fueled by food supply, which is dxy, okay, minus the natural debt, which is cy. Okay. Because differential equation is used, the situation is deterministic and continuous. We know that we can plot it right, based from our differential equations uh, classes. This in turn implies that the generation of both predator and prey are continuously overlapping throughout the time, through the time. Okay, this is a sample simulation of the equation we have earlier. Okay, the differential equation we have. We can plot the population of the prey and predator with respect to time. We know that as a mathematician, you know that you can integrate this, right? You can integrate it with respect to dx and with respect to dp. And then you have a plot of x with respect to time and y with respect to time. Okay? So this is the plot of the population of x and y, which is the prey and predator with respect to time. Next, given the systems of differential equations, we can rewrite it. It actually without time. I sorry, so I have typographical error. So this should be dx over dy. Very good. You're attentive. You're still awake. Okay. I thought you would be sleeping by now. Okay. So this should be dx over dy. So what does? Why do we need to rewrite it in this way? Because we can actually create a phase space plot. So what is a phase space plot? Okay. In the phase space plot. You can plot it with respect. So your x-axis is your prey and then your y-axis is your predator. So you can see the relationship of your prey and predator directly from the plot. Okay. So what is important in doing modeling is you can interpret whatever you're producing. Okay. So this is something very important. Okay. So here, the fixed point, do you know it? fixed point or critical points. I think you know critical points. So the critical points in this equation is actually uh, C over D for X and uh, I think a, a D over C for X and A over B for Y. I will show it later. But anyway, there's a fixed point here. In this plot, um, I assume that A is two-third, B is four-third, I think C and D is one. Okay, C and D is one. And uh, I started with initial value of x and y as 0.9. So if you see the first circle, the first uh, dot there is actually at 0.9.9. Uh, .9. Okay, and then I in, uh, iterated with 0.1 by step index. Okay, so it's 0.9, and then the next dot is actually at one. The next dot is actually at 1.1, 1.1, and so on and so forth until 1.8. Okay. But all of these uh, illustration or closed curves have a fixed point or critical point at 1, 1 half. X is 1, Y is 1 half. 
So that's the critical point for this given equation. Okay. Okay. This is a simulation done using uh, Mathematica. Okay. Uh, in this simulation, you can simulate the population of the rabbit, which is red, and the population of the fox, which is blue. Okay. And then you can also control the par parameters A, B, C, and D. Okay, which corresponds to the growth rate and death rate of the rabbit and fox. Okay? So if we have this set of parameters, this is the population of the rabbit and we have the population of the fox. Okay? Notice the population of the rabbit is a little bit higher than the population of the fox. Okay? But the change of their population is periodic. Okay? And if you plot it in terms of phase plane, plot or portrait, um, we have a closed curve. Okay? This is actually the relationship or the population of rabbit and fox with respect to time. Okay? So the time is plot is actually in clockwise. Oh, clockwise. Okay? In clockwise direction. We start with the dot. Okay? So if you start with the dot, what you will notice if you go up go up from the plot of the dot, the, what happens in x-axis is that the population of the rabbit is actually increasing, right? So if you're moving to the right, the population of the rabbit is increasing. Agree? Okay. So while the population of the rabbit is increasing, what happens to the population of the fox? It's also increasing. So if you look at the plot below, the blue and the red, is it right that uh, from 0 to 5, the population of the rabbit is increasing? And then in somewhere in 0 to 5 also, the population is also increasing for fox, right? And then at some point, it started to go down, okay? Uh, the population of the fox will go down, but the population of the rabbit is still increasing because it's moving to the right, right? So the population of the rabbit is still increasing while the population of the fox is decreasing. And then when you curve down, the population of the rabbit is now it starts to decrease, right? It's going backward decreasing, but what happened to the population of the fox, it's also decreasing, which is logically right, right? If you have fewer prey, no more food, then uh, the fox will also starve and they will also reduce in terms of population, okay? Okay, there are some other plots, but I'll skip that, okay. So how do we calculate the critical point? If we recall from our um, differential equation classes, we can calculate the critical point by assuming that the change of x and y with respect to time equivalent to zero. That means they're at steady state. There's no change. Okay? At steady state, what happens? Okay? And then you let them be equivalent to zero and you solve for x and y. So that will be your critical point. Or in physics, sometimes they call it fixed point. In biology, they call it equilibrium point. You see? These are different terms. They actually meant the same. So the Lotka Volterra equation have actually a long history of uh, use in economics. For example, this is first initiated by Richard uh, Goodwins in 1965. Okay. What Richard Goodwin did is he used the same, exactly the same model proposed by Lotka and Volterra, okay. but he assigned different um, notations for those variables. So X here denotes the level of employment, and Y here denotes the share of wages of national income. So basically this model investigates the dynamics of production and distribution of income. Okay. If you're bored with two equations, you can extend it to more predator. Okay. So you have the rat, the snakes, and the O. Right? So with this equation, you have a three species food chain. Okay. This can also be applied in economics if you need. Okay. Next, we know that life is something like a game. And in game theory, okay, game theory is defined as a logical reflection. Uh, basically, what when you do log uh, game theory, it's a logical reflection of natural selection. So in you can assign your organisms as your players. You can assign the traits of the organism as 
strategies. And then, the organisms inherit rather than choose their strategies. Okay, this is the assumption that you're going to build in your model. And the per capita growth rates are the payoffs that you want to solve in game theory problem. So you see, you can also associate um, predator prey into game theory. And then the environment that we set will be the rules. So what are the goals usually in um, using game theory to study prey predator? Okay. You want to select uh, for adoption that maximize growth rate. You want to maximize the population size or source use efficiency. Okay. And then you want to investigate whether the organism fitness depends, depends upon the frequency of other phenotypes in the population. These are some sample papers uh, published um, in game theory using the concept of or uh, using the prey predator relationship as a background of a problem. Okay. So interestingly, um, game theory is heavily applied or, or used by economists, sociologists, anthropologists, and philosophers. So you see you extend the disciplines working on prey predator. So actually, I'm doing some count. If you notice, I'm, now we have 13 disciplines okay, associated to uh, that works related to prey predator. Okay. Last but not the least is we can also um, study the prey predator relationship using cellular automata or what we call agent-based modeling. So this involves uh, computer science, physicists, and mathematicians. I'll show you the, okay, it's moving. Okay, if you show, uh, if you see in this illustration, the gray um, shades represent the population of the prey and the red represent the population of the predator, okay? And then you can actually change the uh, birth rate and death rate of the prey and pre predator, okay? You'll see the changes in the population. When you look at the illustration, to what other discipline or to what other pro problem can you associate it to? You have something in your mind now that you can associate the illustration you're seeing now. How about a virus attacking some cells, right? Cancer cells attacking healthy cells, right? Okay. And perhaps with your imagination, you can also think of other applications. So I have to move back my mouse. Okay. Okay, to end the talk, so basically what we showed here is we tried to see how different disciplines can collaborate in working one simple problem. Okay. And how can we let our students to also get involved in working in interdisciplinary projects. For example, now in my several projects, most of them, I have students working with me on one project. So I try to integrate them and also try to expose them in how you can work with other dis disciplines, okay, and um, what are the tools, uh, how you can find tools to be used, okay, that will be used in solving the problems given to you, okay. Um, so the students who are working with me usually need more effort in reading more papers because they are not only reading mathematical journals. They also need to read biological journals. They also need to explain the problem like a biologist. Although they don't understand all, but they need to understand the essential part that, the essential part that is related to the problem that they are solving. So usually you need more effort, you need more time, uh, you need to be creative, and then you need to have a good communication skills that um, will deliver your message clearly to your audience or to your collaborators. That is something important. Okay? So, that's all. Thank you for your attention. I have questions? or clarifications, or do you have violent reactions?
Yes, sir. Uh, you may use the mic so that everybody can. I hear. just want to ask if you allow us to have a copy of your presentation. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, I am really interested in the um, presentation because I think I can use that one for our um, agent based modeling type. So you're interested in the simulations there, right? Uh, if I can have a copy of the whole presentation of this slide. Oh, okay. But for the agent-based uh, simulator, it actually uses uh, MATLAB. That's just we have, MATLAB. We have, a, we have a program like that. Yes, okay. So I think you will have a copy of the slides of all the speakers. It will be uploaded in our PPP website. So the VB account where you register. At some point, the uh, the slides of all the speakers will also be uploaded there. So you will get access of them. Yes, ma'am. I'm Linda from St. Louis University, Baguio. How did you start as an interdisciplinary? Did you study biology first? Yeah. How did it start? Was it difficult? Okay, so actually started way back when I'm doing my master's thesis. Um, that time, actually I met uh, a mentor that is Dr. Eduardo Mendoza, who, uh, who is a Filipino researcher working on systems biology. He's actually the one who introduces systems biology here in the Philippines. So when he came here, he actually conducted courses or subject or yeah, course uh, in systems biology. And I'm one of the students who um, first attended his um, subject or his course. Okay? And um, before that, I had been thinking of, because when I actually enrolled in one of the math subjects at Advanced Calculus, and I asked my teacher, um, where can we apply the concept we learned from Advanced Calculus? And then um, she think for a while, and then she told me, well, I don't know, but perhaps you have to ask the engineers. They know the answer where these things are applied. So since then, I, I, I wanted to do something applied. Okay? Applying the concepts either. Of course, you should also have a good foundation of the pure math. You cannot do any application if you don't have a good foundation. So, um, since then I wanted to do some applications of um, mathematics. And when I met uh, Dr. Mendoza, he his work is mainly focused on mathematical biology. And then I said, actually, I hate biology when I was a student. I don't like memorizing all the terms, and I didn't like biology because you need a lot of memorization. But when he introduces the course, I got interested into mathematical biology. He said, this is something I wanted to do. So the first thing I did after enrolling his class is actually sit in or audit into a lot of um, biology courses, like molecular biology, cell biology. Okay. And then at, when I went to UP, they even have courses offered uh, named as Biology for non-biologists. <laughs> so basically, my classmates are uh, computer scientists, physicists, mathematicians. Okay. They made it simple and more appreciative. So in that course, I actually create a simple model model for uh, marine system, marine ecosystem. So in marine ecosystem, you also have prey predator, right? The big fish eating the small fish, and then I try to create a simple toy model. Uh, describing the behavior of this um, ecosystem. So I think it started from that, but indeed, you need to um, know at least a little background of biology and able to do modeling. So if you're not doing biological studies, if you want to do business uh, model, you still need to understand the business terms and um, the background, because they also have different terms, okay? So you have the same model, but the way you interpret, interpretation is more important than building the model. Your model does not make any sense if you cannot interpret it. So in able to interpret the model, you actually need to understand the foundation of the problem. So you, you do need to study. Any other questions? 
Uh, yes, sir. Uh, in doing an uh, interdisciplinary <coughs> research, yes. is there a guideline to choose who should be the leader or the uh, coordinator? Ah, um, usually it's the senior faculty group or the one who initiate the project, who, who think of the project. For example, um, um, recently, um, I attended, a, because I, I have a, um, together with my students, we have a simple stochastic model working on um, virus and uh, healthy cells in a plant, okay? And uh, I attended a talk, a pure biology, biology, biology talk in relation to pathogenesis, in this plant pathogenesis. Um, and when I attended the talk, um, he actually described to us that um, when they're studying the cacao, okay, they have the cacao, and then they try to index the, the effect of the virus or bacteria in the cacao. So if you know the cacao, usually if there are dark shades, these are infected by some virus, like blood, uh, black pot rot. Okay. So are you, are you, do you know? Mm. Okay. Anyway. Oh, anyway, so there are the dark spots. And then uh, what they do is they look at the cacao and then they tell, okay, this is uh, the infected rate or index of this uh, black pod rot disease is um, 6, kasi parang 60%. Okay. Parang 70%. Hindi, parang 90%. So it's subjective. It depends on the farmer. Uh, they look at the cacao and they think oh, it's infected and this is the index of infection. Okay, then when, after attending the talk, I talked to the speaker. I said, you know you can actually uh, simulate that. You can take a picture of the cacao and then the picture will calculate because it's just area, right? In mathematics, you just calculate the total area and then calculate the area of the infected part. And that's that, that will be the index, whatever percent it is. Oh, really? That's interesting. That's what he said. Okay, let's uh, start the project. Okay, so we applied uh, funding for that project. Okay, so I um, I collaborated with some computer scientists I know from computer science department. And then we start up the project. Of course, I cannot do the programming. I don't know how to. I, I need a lot of effort and time to do the program. But the idea is there. Okay, the concept is there. Just need to, to do it, to implement it. So we have computer scientists uh, doing the image processing. We have computer scientists working on the platform for the cell phone for it to be used. And then we have biologists who will tell us whether, okay, this is, is this a black pod rat? Or maybe it's just not just a black pod rat, it's something else. It's just a, a, a pasa or something, <laughs> we don't know, okay? So we also need the expertise of biologists to tell us whether the image we capture, the calculation we made, uh, is correct. So something like something to validate. Okay. So in that project, um, actually anybody can be the research leader, but most of the time it will be the senior faculty. Or if the senior faculty doesn't have time, he will actually throw it to the junior faculty who have more time to manage it. Because you also need time to manage the project. It's actually difficult to manage a project. Actually, I don't like managing a project. I want to be involved in a project, but as much as possible, I don't want to manage a project because it's difficult. There are a lot of um, administrative work or paperwork that you need to fill up in able to uh, apply for the or get your funds, request your funds. And when you uh, uh, when you use the fund, you have to liquidate it and check that out. These are paperwork that I don't want to <laughs> to get involved in. So uh, in that project, I pass it to the junior. The junior the youngest faculty actually who can do the manage, management, management and uh, interaction or summary report. Okay. Did I answer your questions? Any other questions? If none, I think you are hungry and you're ready for your snacks. <laughs> So I would like to call on Dr. Isigani Hoss of the Mathematics Department to award the Certificate of Appreciation to our speaker.